We're ready to cast off, and of course, the wind has piped up. So we're trying to time pulling away from the dock with the wind gusts just right. We've got a 285 nautical mile offshore sail ahead of us to the Canary Islands. For those of you who are new here, we've made our way out of the Mediterranean this season and we're making our way back to the Caribbean on our Hunter 42 Passage sailboat. It's our final hop before we embark on our second Atlantic crossing within the last 18 months. This episode is all about our preparations for what will be the second biggest milestone of our life on the water. The Canary Islands will be the last stop for us to get everything we need before it's just us two and the Atlantic Ocean. All right, so provisioning for an Atlantic crossing is not cheap. So I do want to thank Private Internet Access for sponsoring this week's video and helping us out a little bit. So I'm going to take a quick minute to share with you what PIA is all about and why their service is useful for us as full-time cruisers and travelers. Private Internet Access is a VPN service. A VPN is a virtual private network which hides your identity while you're online. Instead of being at risk from prying eyes who could be trying to steal your sensitive information, PIA encrypts your personal data. Using the internet without PIA is like going to a see-through public toilet. Aside from keeping us safe online, PIA is a game changer when it comes to streaming our favorite TV shows and movies. So once we cross over to the other side, a lot of the shows and movies that we've been enjoying over in Europe aren't going to be available to us because we'll be in a totally different region and continent altogether. Streaming services like Netflix have different libraries based on the region that you're in. Once we make it to the Caribbean, that's not going to be an issue for us because all we have to do is open up PIA, connect to say a UK server, and all of our favorite British shows will be there for us to watch. Now we've got an awesome deal for you guys. We have 83% off your subscription of PIA, plus you'll get four months free. That's only $2.03 per month and you're able to cover all of the devices in your household. To get that discount, just use our link, piavpn.com slash sailinggypsy. We'll pop the link in the description box below this video as well. Ah, well, we're off, as you can see. Fortunately, we left Madeira. We really loved it there. So glad that that was sort of like a, a random detour stop. That place is absolutely gorgeous. 99% of this passage, we have been horizontal. We've just been really tired, I guess. A lot of hiking, a lot of moving around and active completely since we first got there. So just now catching up on some sleep, but today's comfortable enough and I need to get fishing rod out. This has been a pretty comfortable passage. Um, definitely feel the weather heating up as we move a little bit further south. It's been a fantastic passage. <laughs> Barely any sea stay, just calm. Great, eight to 12 knots. It was really sad to leave Madeira so soon. Like, I wish we could have stayed there longer. There's so much to see. And I think that we really only hit, like, the tip of the iceberg. We could have gone on so many more hikes and seen so many more gorgeous views that the island has to offer. Like, if we had stayed later, I think we would have been there for a long while before we had a window as nice as this. And that would have cost us a lot because there aren't really any protected anchorages, so we would have had to stay at the marina. You were saying Gypsy was screaming to be let off the dock because oh. those dock lines if we stayed there any longer, we would have had to have gone and bought those spring absorber things. <laughs> and maybe some new cleats.
Yahoo! We got land, only about five miles away, to the tip of the land, then we got about another four miles to wrap around into where we're heading. But kind of lost the wind a little bit. We're still sailing, but we're moving at like three and a half to four-ish knots. And we were doing so good all night for our last 24 hours. We almost did 150 nautical miles. Like we thought we would have been seeing land around six o'clock tonight, but it is almost two o'clock, so we've crushed it. We were a little bit nervous about coming into this anchorage before tomorrow because tomorrow's when the ARC leaves, which is like a whole rally of boats that are going to be crossing the Atlantic, um, plus a lot of, I guess, cruisers that follow along that might not be part of the ARC, but like to follow them. So we know that it's just packed in there. Um, I think our friends told us that like 40 plus boats left the other night for the ARC Plus, but it's still packed. So it's definitely not something we wanted to get into at night, but I guess we'll see how busy it is to check if the uh, lure is still on there. It's still there. Nice when we have a little bit of a calmer sail towards the anchorage, because then we can start to clean up the boat. I'll clean up down below, just tidy it up, because. Even just little things go a long way in a small space. And then of course, Travis, I think has already started washing down the, the enclosure and stuff, the windows. Just makes us feel a little bit more comfortable once we roll in. And hopefully nothing goes flying that I put back. The amount of hair that collects in the <laughs> cockpit during overnight passages, eh? Oh, it's insane. Well, this passage was kind of exceptionally salty. There was a lot of mist oh, blowing yeah, around. Yeah, That's yeah. how we closed everything. So now I got like mist of salt everywhere. I know so. how much Travis loves salt. Uh -huh. As we approach the harbor in Las Palmas, we can see all of the sailboat masts from a distance. These are the boats that will be taking off tomorrow, so we've tucked in outside of the main entrance for the night. This morning we have quite the show. It's really something seeing this many sailboats leaving all at the same time. Now that all, I think the majority of the boats have left from the Ark and it's less busy, we made our way down into the anchorage. And there's kind of two sections here between the marinas and they're all pretty packed. So we're just trying to find a spot that we feel comfortable in because it's pretty deep. It's about 40 feet deep and I don't think we have as much chain as we would like. I doubt everybody here has all that much chain out, just judging by how close the boats are together. How are we feeling? Are you sussing it out to see if anybody's left? I think people are just coming in, not leaving. I nah, just sussing it out. This is not heavy winds. Yeah, and we should be okay for a little bit the next few days. I was just saying that I don't think anybody has as much chain as we would probably like to have because you couldn't do it in, in Anchorage this tight, this deep. I think so. I'm watching that guy. I'm like, I think I can put out 200. There's no way everybody has 200 feet of chain out in 40 feet of water. Like we like a minimum in no wind of five to one. 
Like that's just what we feel safe in. There's no wind, five to one, and um, 200 feet of chain, there's no way. Everybody, but everybody would be on top of each other. <laughs> we just asked the people beside us how much chain they have out, and they have about 65 feet, and we're in 40 feet of water, so we have a lot more out, but we're not uh, too close, I guess, right? How do you feel about that? We're going to be holding this direction for a while, so I feel a lot more confident about our holding ability. Yeah. And then uh, I think he's waiting to go into a marina, though. Yeah, I think a lot of people are waiting to head into the marina because all of the boats have taken off and freed up some space in there. Because there are some people that are sitting around here that won't be leaving until January to likely catch more wind. But we are eager, as you guys probably already know by now, and we want to soak up all of the Caribbean winter because. It's just the best weather in winter in the Caribbean. Just so comfortable, so you definitely want to get as much of that as you can. It's warmed up a lot, so he feels comfortable getting in there, scrubbing the hull that is long overdue. Our boat needs some love. <laughs> it needs to be hauled out. <laughs> Last time we did a haul out was in Grenada in summer. That was not fun, it was really hot, but uh, yeah, that was two years ago, so she's due for some work. There's little barnacles that have grown between the rudder and the hull. And they're just bad. like drawing out the paint because <laughs> they just rub constantly. Water is really cooling, although it does smell like manure, so I wonder if somebody's offloading some manure because it reeks. Travis is in the water, and I'm like, is it someone's holding tank? <laughs> <laughs> no. We found out why it smells like manure. Apparently there's a huge livestock like boat or something out at Anchor. Is that what somebody said? Yeah, it's a huge container ship or a shipping ship of livestock. A shipping ship. A ship that ships. A shipping ship that smells like shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh it's not pleasant right now with the direction that the wind's blowing. I think we're gonna we're kinda settled in here now. We're gonna head in to shore. It is a Sunday, so not much is open, but we're kind of just going to get a lay of the land, see where we can land the dinghy. There's really two main things that we have to get done in the Canaries before we go. And that oh. finish all our crossing snacks, apparently, Oreos. We've been digging into those pretty hard. Um, but we have to provision and then, like, for food. And then we have to find a place to get our propane tanks filled because just the way, like, the timing worked. We were hoping we would have our big tanks carry us all the way through passage, but no. So we have two 13 kilo tanks that we want to try to get filled here. If not, we have one backup camping gas bottle, like one of those blue bottles that we know only lasts us two weeks. So we just feel better if we have our big tanks filled, which I know we'll be able to fill very easily in the Caribbean, which we always had been able to do. Um, but just for the crossing, we'd like to have a big tank. Full. Nice if we, well, if we can't find anywhere to fill these ones, hopefully the one we have right now lasts us. Like, I don't know. Until we do all of our pre-provisioning cooking and stuff every time i turn it on now i'm like is the flame still on like i'm pretty sure we're cutting it close to when it will run out we do end up aiming for martinique instead of saint martin um i don't think we could find propane fill in martinique oh yeah they only do butan yeah so they'd have to go to saint lucia or yeah but the islands are close enough Las Palmas is known for being a great stop for cruisers like ourselves to provision and get any last minute things ready before crossing the ocean to the Caribbean. There's a huge dinghy dock here, which is really nice and it's not too packed. We've noticed that there are a ton of stores here, like Chandlery's. <laughs> And there are a lot of dive shops, so we're really excited for them to open tomorrow on Monday. My dress is on inside out, so I'm like holding my arm along the tag, hoping nobody notices, but yeah. Are you all started? <laughs> yeah, I feel much better. We literally just... <laughs> yeah, I did it. So you, it was like a, as I lifted it, it folded it inside out or right side in or whatever you call it. It took a split second longer than I thought it would, but yeah, nobody's around, so I feel better now. Oh look, this is nice. Apparently you can pull your dinghy up here as well. It's a beach with some volleyball nets or those volleyball nets, yeah. Just take a walk along the 
boardwalk here, and we should end up at a promenade if we follow this somewhere. With a population of 400,000, it's the capital city of the Canary Islands, which are an autonomous Spanish archipelago in the Atlantic Ocean. It's also a great spot for those wanting to catch some waves. Found the surf. Kind of wishing we had surfboards now. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> Look at that wave. making our way over to pick up a car rental that we found the other day when we were getting a lay of the land. I'm going to take the car rental to get our two big propane tanks refilled. It's a little ways down the island, so we had to have a car for that. And then while we have the car, we'll do a little wandering around, go to some of the bigger grocery stores, and start stocking up on some snacks, like non-perishables. We don't see a weather window just yet to uh, start the crossing so we're not getting any of our fruit, veg, anything like that. We're just going to get, I don't know, snacks and stuff with the car when we uh, have it. It's actually quite funny as we were walking across the street we came across one of those electronic boards that show the time and the weather and we're like, it's showing an hour earlier than we thought it was. Uh, I felt like it was an hour earlier. When the alarm rang this morning, Travis was like, nope, I'm not waking up. It's, I don't see any light. It's dark out. So I think the whole I guess the couple of days we've been here so far I don't even know what time we were operating on but yeah I guess now we're super early we're an hour ahead of schedule because the car rental place isn't even open yet um, so we're gonna try to grab a coffee or something it's almost perfect yeah now now we don't have to feel rushed and we can go yeah have a coffee because I haven't eaten anything or nothing so yeah but that's just weird because my phone didn't update and it says location wise we're in Las Palmas it says it's 9 a.m., but everywhere else and nature <laughs> seems to reflect that, no, it is an hour earlier. So we've got two butter croissants and one with sugar on it. Just a plate of bread for breakfast. There Sounds was a, like... There was a deal, three for whatever price, so it was a better deal that way. Sounds like you're up. We eat a lot of coffee and bread for breakfast. I don't see anything <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> I don't, but I'm like... It's funny because every time we enter a bakery, we have to quickly ask ourselves, where are we? How do we ask for like, this coffee? Yeah, how do we ask? Because <laughs> we've learned, you know, how to order the types of coffees that we like. So we're like, are we in Portugal? Are we in... <laughs> well, we even realized that Madeira says the coffee we like different than the Azores. Oh, yeah, or even <laughs> different from Portugal. mainland Portugal. When we were in the Azores, last year, a year and a half ago, we learned that the coffee we liked, because there's so many different types of Portuguese coffees, we like Maya de Leques, which is pretty much like a latte, like a half milk, half espresso sort of mix. Which pretty much tastes similar to just, you know, coffee with milk in Spain, which is Café con Leche. When we were in Madeira last week, they called it a chineza, just like a Chinese person. <laughs> they got explained, it's called yeah. chineza. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how like... I felt about that, but yeah, I don't think it was, yeah, but anyways. That's what they call it, so we were calling it that, and then now that we've arrived in the Canaries, which is Spain, we had to revert back to, yep, it's Café Con Leche. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. Changing all these countries so quick. The same car that we had in Madeira, actually, the little Fiat Panda. But I think it's one up, because we've got a, there's a yeah. stereo in this one. It has a stereo, and it's got some button controls on the, on the steering wheel, and it shifts a little smoother. Woo! Drive it again! Life in the fast lane! <laughs> Hold your breath! Oh, he failed! Totally failed. <laughs> we normally hold our breath when we enter tunnels while driving. Well, I feel like he shouldn't, but he always does it. Anybody else oh. see that? <laughs> we, I, okay. It's actually a really cool driving here because we're on these big highways. And you kind of just feel like, I don't know, you're sort of thing driving, but then every now and again, you look out the window and you just see this wild landscape and you're reminded that you're on a volcanic island. It's super cool. Are you Feels like I'm driving through Arizona. <laughs>
Sort of, not really. We found the propane refill place. Maybe top. We just sit in the car and wait. I don't think it takes very long. When we parked, we initially, Travis had pulled in, but they told us to reverse. It's just like, you know, an emergency thing in case you need to. Gotta... You line it out here? There's plants <laughs> blowing up? Yeah. Makes sense. That makes sense. Everything's back in. I'm really excited to get those two propane tanks refilled because our 13 kilo tanks, each one, if we're cooking a lot and using the oven for stuff like we do, a lot on passages for lunches and stuff, uh, we turn on the oven for maybe like 25 minutes at a time, half an hour, and you guys know that we bake a lot, we cook a lot, and one of those tanks will last us four and a half months. And I know for most people, one of those tanks might last like 10 months, we've heard, but yeah, four and a half months is pretty good for us if we can just get those both filled. We'll be set for eight, nine months. Yeah, we eat a lot more salads in the Caribbean. I don't know why, we just do. Oh, because we find our sauces that we like, and the lettuce is pretty cheap and regrettable. So we'll just probably this, eat them This is longer. Travis talking about eating lettuce here. He's all excited. Like, I eat this whole thing. But you know what I mean? Like, we did, our, our tanks lasted longer in the Caribbean because we ate cool lunches versus hot lunches. And, yeah. So. But still, like, not having to worry about with those two big tanks we have is awesome. It's just like one less thing to worry about. <laughs> I would love to go electric. I mean, I don't know. If we, we I do get, want lithium batteries at some point. Our system could use a bit more, but we could use more electric. solar, and then we could be more like efficient on electricity, and then we need lithium for that. So okay, then. but the thing is, those induction stoves, I see a lot of cruisers using them, and they seem great, but we'd also need an electric oven then, because I bake so much. I just think you cook too much for us to make that feasible on the amount of power we'd need. We'd need like, yeah. You know, 3,000, 4,000 watts of solar to keep up with how much cooking we do. Baking an electric oven, which I did look up just briefly, and they were quite pricey, so it's not high on the priority list right now. I think what we've done, it's, yeah, we got two monster tanks, and just, we know how long it lasts us in the polar climates, and that's that's a long enough time to figure out where else to get for baking. <laughs> No, oh, there's definitely way more in that tank. We wait about an hour. It's like three euros a kilo for the propane. And turns out one of our tanks was still quite full, but they did it like they measured it. So yeah, it they nice. did it by kilos, not by, yep, 13 kilo tank. That's what we charge you for. So it was very legit. It was so legit. Now, we now got tanks and... yep, now we're going to go up the street here and check out an Ikea because there's an Ikea. <laughs> Man, definitely has that Ikea smell. <laughs> you just can smell that boxing wood. Okay, so what I was most excited to find was the garlic press that Ikea has, because it's just like the best one and ours is kind of a um, little oxidized. I'm not finding it. But I did find this dish rack, which I think is going to fit perfect have this mat at home underneath our current makeshift dish rack and i think it fits perfect yeah the length is the same that's the thing you never know if it's going to be just off but we have this mat so this will slide off Right now, ours is like on the whole pegs. These will just go right off. I don't know, I still like it. I know, even if we put it on a thing, it's still a soft round leg. Slide off. We came here for literally just a garlic press, and now we're leaving with a rug. rug. Initially, Travis wanted this one because it would hide dirt, but I don't think it goes with our color scheme very well. I feel like it would just make the boat a lot darker and I don't know, kind of dingy looking. Whereas this one over here, we like to keep the cream, but cream obviously can get dirty a lot easier when it's not a shag like the one that we have, but it has the designs here. I feel like it's not like a, I don't know, it's got enough fluff that it kind of almost looks shaggy, but not, I don't know. Some containers and the dish rack. Absolutely not what we came here for, but I feel like that's usually what happens. 
Yeah, I'm still. Oh man, I'm really bummed about the garlic pasta thing. Driven down to the south end of the island now, and I'm pretty sure this is where most of the tourists go. The entire area is filled with resorts. Like there's a Hard Rock Cafe, um, a Ryu Palace, a bunch of golf courses. Where we were was like the sailor and boaters area, and here are like the vacationers. Sand dunes in Mas Palomas have been protected as a nature reserve since 1987, and they were formed during the last ice age by wind blowing the sand from the now subdued marine shelf. I got the greens in my teeth. So I thought that area was going to be a lot busier than it was, but it could just be because it's November. So maybe it was exceptionally quiet. I just thought it was going to be a lot busier with how many resorts I saw all over the map there. And now we are pulled over on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. We kind of went to the end of the line on the highway and nature calls. <laughs> Sanitizer? No, it was in my other bag. I don't have it. Scoop me out a little piece of that ice. Wait, I want to wash my hands. There's pop in there. What do you want here? Thank goodness for this McDonald's run, I tell ya. Well, oddly. Actually, maybe not so good we had that McDonald's run. I don't know. Yeah. But oddly. What? That was quite a popular spot. What? There's people there? <laughs> No, but there's other like there's like five other little rock huts with like remnants of toilet paper. I'm like <laughs> very awkward. Oh, <laughs> like, totally. and I'm like way up there. Funny. I guess everyone else ate at Highway Five. We're driving up a little bit more into the rural area for a more scenic drive before our last stop for the day, the grocery store. Buggy drives like our boat. It just steers from the back. <laughs> because we don't have a planned day of departure yet, this is solely a snack and non fresh food grocery shop. The cookies. Just dropped all of the stuff off in patches here, and I'm going to wait with everything while Travis goes and fills the car back up with gas and then returns it. So we wanted to return it before the end of the day today when they close so that we don't have to look for a parking spot and pay for parking overnight only to return it first thing in the morning. Because we're kind of cutting it close, I'm gonna stay here with all the stuff and hopefully it doesn't get lost. There are a lot of roundabouts, a lot of U-turns and um, he doesn't have a map on there. He doesn't have a map with him, so. He's back and he didn't get lost. No, only made one illegal turn, but I had to, otherwise I would have definitely been a lot longer. Yeah. But I don't think I did. It was questionable illegal turn. But. Well, it's not dark yet, so you made it back in good time. And now we've got all our stuff to bring back. Okay, so and to unload. Hopefully it's not too wavy out there. It actually fits perfectly in the spacing that we have here. And it's a lot lower, so it feels less cluttered. And then we got this little part for the utensils. Love it. Travis sewed our dinghy chops back in Grenada two years ago, but the material wasn't the greatest. So we decided it was time to finally rip them off. It looks okay after you cleaned it up, but it's definitely going to motivate Travis to make our new set of chops that much quicker, I think, once we get to the Caribbean. First thing we do. I'm just starting to meal prep a little bit at a time while we're here waiting for a weather window. 
and we're kind of just ballparking it. We're anticipating that it could take us three weeks to cross, but I'm not making lunches and dinners for 21 days. Like that's just too much. I don't think we could even fit all of that for the both of us in our freezer and our fridge. I'm just doing some couscous salad. I've been really liking that lately. Easy to make, makes a whole bunch, and I can just put that all in a, a big bag and throw it in the freezer. All right, so I ended up making way more couscous than I thought I was gonna have. I hope it all fits into this one bag. I don't know how many lunches I'm gonna get out of it. I won't know till I put it in here. I wish Travis liked couscous because then it would have been so easy to make. Silence, he doesn't want couscous. Oh, I didn't know if you're talking to him. Yeah. He doesn't like couscous because of the way it eats or something, like the texture, I don't know. All right, so I actually ended up getting 12 lunches and a little bit left over for food now. There we go. To prevent feeling overwhelmed with cooking lots of food in a tiny kitchen, I like to space out my meal prepping. So we found these in the grocery store, tried them out and they were really good. It's just a chicken kebab meat and they're fast fry, five minutes. And we just eat them with seasoned rice and it was really good. So we loaded our freezer with this, made our usual chicken, um, like shepherd's pie sort of deal here. And I have some pasta sauce here and my couscous for lunch. And Travis will just have like sandwich wraps and stuff for lunch. And um, yeah, I think we're good for the pre-made stuff. Just got to make the potatoes for this and um, if I have time I'll make a little bit more for Travis but we'll see. We save produce runs till the day before we plan to leave. We're at the grocery store for the last time and we're stocking up on all our fresh stuff so all our produce and we're trying to find stuff that's going to last and also the most unripe of things. Yeah. Lucky maybe. So try to put these a lemon in there. Is your backpack full? Yes. We have two backpacks, Travis's 11 liter bag and my 26 liter bag, plus three small reusable shopping bags that seem to work well for us. We somehow managed to cram everything in to make it work. Some lighter stuff. Oh, you can definitely squeeze the lemon and the red peppers. I don't want them to get bruised, so. tight in this anchor here with people coming in. <laughs> but yeah, that, they were pretty close here when it slack. But we haven't touched yet, so I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We got some bread and croissants to last us for the first two days. And we got a bunch of produce and I don't know like, I feel like we didn't get enough, but realistically, I don't think between the two of us, we eat that much in a given week anyway. So times it by three weeks, I think we have enough. And we're going to do a count to see how many we have before we go and how many we have left when we make it across. We tried to get the greenest of green for apples and the papaya, like they're harder. All right, so I think this is enough produce for the two of us. I'm just worried that it's gonna go bad. I don't know that we can eat it fast enough, but obviously more is better than not enough. We're gonna hang this above our sink. Like I know most people hang it outside on the back, but I don't know, I, I feel like, do you think our fruit would last longer inside? Probably without direct, direct sunlight. 
I don't think it's the thing of lasting longer. I think it's just out of the way. But since we have a center cockpit and we walk back and forth, that's why I didn't like it there because we bang our head on it. Yeah, so we might actually just hang it right across here. And um, hopefully it all fits. So we used to have an egg like holder that used to sit right up here. But because all of the eggs here aren't washed and like they don't need to go in the fridge, we were able to stick them in here. So we've got four dozen eggs in here, plus a bunch of different wraps for Travis's lunches. And then over here we have a stack of all these bacon pieces that he likes to eat with his eggs. And then we stack the gnocchi up in here. Cheese. Yeah, but they just last longer. Our little ice box is also filled with stuff here. Just some Alfredo sauces for Travis. We've got cheese for his wraps. Uh, some hot dogs, some chocolate, more cheese. Pastry dough, I'm going to put them in there. meat in there and down here it's kind of a little mess we've got some chicken I'm gonna cook up today and then freeze some we've got our milks more sandwich meat some panna cotta stuff and just our regular sauces and two big tubs of yogurt stacked there a little snack cupboard got more nuts some dried fruit cookies um, a big Toblerone bar here some cookies Travis's Biscoff and Oreo stash and shortbread. And then our little pantry cupboard's always full. We've got tons of chip noodles, cereal, nuts. What else we got back there? Oh, there's lots of stuff actually. I think we've got a whole bunch of UHT milk down there as well. We've got oat milks, coconut milks, and all of that, and cookies. So yeah, this whole pantry's filled with snacks. And then under the ottoman, we've also got a bunch of food as well. All in there, we've got some rices, sauces, canned stuff, more rice in that instant pot that we never use. Rice in this big black and red thing too. So there's lots of food in there. And then underneath our couch, we've also got our canned stuff. Got lots of canned stuff in there, drinks, and there's more that goes way back in there, but you get the idea. And then in our forward head, we've got a whole bunch of pasta all in there too. So I would say we're pretty good for food. I think we have more than enough, so yeah. Oh, that's the only thing, eh? They're gonna hit the, the stairs here, Bear. That's how it was last time. Well, it didn't bruise? No, because I tied it off so it doesn't sway. Yeah, that's the only thing. It's not like long enough, do you know what I mean? Technically, you want it. You want it longer. I feel like you, this you is. Want a... it, you want it out here. Yeah, we always <laughs> have 10 times the amount of fruit that we did last time. So. This can't work with this because it's just gonna go this way and then it's gonna defeat the bruise. I got you. is not going to work with the amount of fruit that we have. Our provisioning, we don't really itemize everything, breaking it down by, you know, the number of meals and number of days, all of that. Getting used to how much we eat on a weekly basis, knowing how much food we need to buy every time we go to the grocery store when we do a big grocery shop, like once a week. And then really we're just timesing it by three and buying a little bit more. It's more so having a variety of food because that's like our little treat it's our little morale sort of bringer upper and it's just nice to know that we have something to look forward to eating as when you're on a long passage all we do is snack we're not going to starve we have tons and tons of food on board if we really needed it but it's just having the things that we're excited to have um 
and we're underway. I would say that the pre-made foods, I make about half of our estimated passage. So if I can make like 10 pre-made dinners for the, each of us, the quick cook stuff like the kebab meat I showed you, easy enough to make underway. So that's considered like a pre-made meal for me because, you know, it's already, somebody's already cooked it and we just have to reheat it. Things like that, if we have 10, I know we're good because chances are we're gonna have conditions where we're gonna be able to make food. And even if it's something simple to make, it's fine. Like we've got mac and cheese, we've got instant noodles, we've got pasta, we've got rice. Loads and loads of meat that's frozen as well that we just always have on the boat. We have started off in the Bahamas and the Caribbean where we didn't know when our next big grocery shop would be. I started off with that hoarder mentality, so feeling like we had to just stuff the boat at all times with food. We've never felt like we didn't have enough food on board. It was just not having maybe what we craved at the time. Right, so we didn't end up going with the hammock. We just stuffed what we could up here and then put the rest in a basket or in a container on the floor. We just didn't want it swaying around all in the back. And of course, as we do regularly and before any big passage, a rigging check to make sure everything looks all good up there. The spinnaker halyard is the one you're hoisting me on. This is just the backup. Okay. The last errand is filling up our diesel cans. We have an 80 gallon fuel tank and carry 20 extra gallons on board. Oh, and of course there's one last runabout land to stretch the legs before we head on board and out to sea for the next three-ish weeks. Stuck it out. Are we excited? Are we eager? Very eager, very excited. Crazy to think. We're heading off again on another Atlantic crossing. That boat right there is going to be our buddy boat. We met them back in Ibiza. We hung out with them in Gibraltar. And now we're here together. So we're happy to have a buddy boat, have some last minute chats, and then we'll be on our way. Now, if you've made it to the end of this exceptionally long episode, we'd hope you've already hit the subscribe button. But in case you haven't, here's your friendly reminder to do so. Hit the notification bell as well, because you won't want to miss our Atlantic crossing, which is coming up next.